put my contact back in my head because eye doctors suck and what they tell you isn't true. I can see you here. I can't see you here. It's a problem. Uh, all right, let's rock and roll. Uh, back in August of 2005, I was in this relationship with this girl who we both conveniently were quitting our jobs and starting a new one in September. So her being from Upper Darby and me being from media, I decided to take her on a tour of the world that she hadn't been to outside of like Sea Isle City. And uh, <laughs> so we hopped on a plane to Texas on about the 10th of August and uh, with no idea when we were coming back. Hit Houston, hit San Antonio, Austin, Corpus Christi. And then finally we got in contact with a friend of hers who she graduated with, who uh, was a grad student at Texas A&M. And we were able to take up shelter for like six days in College Station. So we went, it was a good time. This girl just lived with a roommate, two grad students. And um, we toured College Station for three, four days. Me, this girl she graduated with, and, and her roommate. Now her roommate was definitely a special breed. Her name was Angela Iglesias, I'm pretty sure. And, which I always found funny because it translates to like the churches. And, <laughs> and she had this special talent, which some might call prostitution, some might call promiscuity. I call it basic economics. <laughs> we were there for six nights and there were four college athletes, all with professional aspirations that managed to spend the night in her bedroom. None of which any shorter than six foot eight. And it, it, it was just hilarious because the church growing up for money and blah, 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 it kind of made sense to me. Uh, <laughs> but on like the fourth day, my, my girlfriend comes up to me and like corners me and she's like, this girl's going to jump your bones. You can't let this happen, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just sitting there smiling like, yeah. And she's like, well, what are you smiling about? And like, we're in a monogamous relationship, obviously. And I'm like, I'm, babe, I'm not going to sleep with the girl, obviously. But this means one of two things. This means this girl has taken a sharp economic look at me and I'm going to be rather wealthy later in life. And this, this is awesome if this is what you're saying. Or, or secondly, I carry myself like a six foot eight black man, which is equally as awesome. But uh, so we, we run out of things to do in College Station. And on the sixth day, one of her suitors tells us we can accompany him to the gym and go lift some weights, uh, chill inside. And... Um, one of them, as we're leaving, uh, the girl she graduated high school with kind of goes, yo, why don't you check out the George Bush Library while you're down there? It's, it's right around the corner from the gymnasium. We're like, all right, we're both educated folk, a nice day in the air conditioning, take in some books, you know, pack a little backpack. Sounds like a good idea. We get done lifting weights, and the guy's like, yeah, next building right up down the road, uh, George Bush Library, you'll see it. Things in Texas aren't bigger. That's a lie, all right? Like, let me see if I can make this a comparison. The things in Texas are to the things in Pennsylvania the same way the people's ears in Texas are way to people's ears in Pennsylvania. They're the same f size. There's just a whole lot of unusable space in between them in Texas. All right. So this right around the corner was like a mile point eight in the 106 degree middle of August weather that was so hot that Moses would have turned around and made a deal with the Pharaoh to go back into the shade. So. We roll, we get up to the front of this building, we're like George Bush Library, it's like very staunch liberals here from the Northeast, and, and we're in like Republican heartland, and uh, Bush heartland nonetheless. And we walk in the door, and this very nice lady is there, and she's like, y'all have an admission pass? We're like, no, it's a library. <laughs> and she was like, no, it's not a library. And I kind of looked around, and I was like, it says George Bush Library. <laughs> It comes to find out they call this thing library, but it's really like an audio-visual celebration of George the first Bush's presidency. It's not a lie. There's no books. There's a bunch of like there's a movie theater and a bunch of pictures and like a, a fuselage from Air Force One. And we like we just trucked 1.8 miles. We got a backpack on with books and stuff, and they're like, this isn't a library. And I'm so confused. So we pay the $30 and they tell us to go over to Leroy to get our backpack scanned. And Leroy puts the backpack through the thing, and, and he stops it halfway through, and he looks over, and he goes, y'all thought this was a library library, right? And I went, yes, Leroy, I thought it was a library. And there is nothing worse than getting your verbal comprehension made fun of by a man named Leroy in the middle of Texas. It's like a hate crime. It's ridiculous. So we go through, I mean, nothing really eventful. We just kill two hours looking at George Bush's life. And due to some tacos from the night before, I, I have to use the special bathroom in like the granite hallway and I, I do my thing and, and I use a Pennsylvania amount of toilet paper I would assume and it's not one of the swirly toilets. It's one of the toilets like just Well, it 
and nothing goes down. And, it goes, and nothing goes down. And I'm like, oh, f and I start backing away, and as I'm pulling on my pants and buttoning it, I kind of start walking towards the door, I hear four or five more times. And as I'm leaving, I kind of look, and there's this mural of the Bush family on the wall, as like my poop water seeps out from under the stall and is creeping across the bathroom. And I'm like, this is a bad omen. We leave, uh, we wrap up our trip by going to New Orleans for a couple days. Uh, beautiful town, uh, we plan to get married in Jackson Square, a dream of one dreams or whatever. Uh, met some people, it didn't fly home until about the 26th of August. Uh, four days later, I'm sitting and watching a split screen of CNN and watching the city of New Orleans flood completely while George Bush stands there not doing anything. And it was just a very strange, eerie feeling that I had flooded his bathroom and now he was flooding my city. And it wasn't funny, I don't know, it just made me feel weird. And it was kind of the strangest thing that ever happened to me. That's all I got. <laughs>